Hi, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Pepijn Schoenmaker. I would like to talk to you today about the Five Forces model of Michael Porter. Perhaps you've already heard about the Five Forces model of Michael Porter. But let's have a look at a deeper understanding and a learning about this model. The Five Forces model of Michael Porter is really essential for your meso-analysis. The model distinguishes the market attractiveness of the business. This is basically why this model is invented. So it uh, determines the market attractiveness. How attractive is your market? How attractive is the market where all these competitors are active in? And how do we determine the attractiveness? Michael Porter invented this model in 1979 and actually he has five different forces which he thinks or which are the most important forces to determine the market attractiveness. Let's have a look at these five forces. In the middle you find the rivalry amongst existing competitors. So all your competitors including yourself, including your own business, focuses in this uh, uh, middle section of the model. The rivalry of these competitors are being influenced by the four forces around them, surrounding them. Each of these competitors has to deal with a certain threat or a certain power which give the rivalry a higher tension. Let's have a look at these forces surrounding them. Let's first start with the threat of new entrants. Every business has a certain threat, or maybe less of a threat, of entrants who want to enter the market which you are in and which your competitors are in. You can imagine that entrants from overseas or from different countries like China try to enter a market and try to also have a small a piece of the pie where they want to sell their products. Maybe the products that are similar to the products that you already sell. Another threat is the threat of the substitute products. You can imagine that there are products kind of similar to your products or which are a perfect substitute for the products that you already sell. For instance, if you sell mopeds, a substitute could be an electrical bicycle. This could be a threat to your products and perhaps you sell less products if customers decide to rather buy an electrical bike than for instance a moped. There are also two powers. The first one is the bargaining power of suppliers. You have to, to make your products, you need to buy your products to create these products. If a supplier, if there are a lot of suppliers, then you have you can pick which supplier you like to do business with. If there are not a lot of suppliers and you only can choose two or three, you can imagine that a supplier can choose their own prices or their volumes or can make a choice not to supply you with certain products uh, against a certain price. For instance, if you are Apple and you need the glass frame for your mobile phones, and there are only one or two suppliers who have this specific type of glass, then your choice is not broad and the supplier could choose to raise the price or not go with the price that you want to pay. Another power is the bargaining power of buyers. These, for instance, are your customers. If you have a really transparent market and the buyers exactly know what kind of price they want to pay or they should pay for your product, then you don't have a lot of power to these buyers. So the buyers can choose to buy their product somewhere else if the price is not right. But if your product is really special and really, really exclusive, then probably your buyers won't have a lot of power. So the power uh, then is low at that certain point. If these forces surrounding you and your competitors are really strong, you can imagine that the rivalry also is really 
strong amongst you, you and your competitors. Then, in that certain case, there is not a really attractive market which you are in. Let's have a look how we use this model. Because writing down certain phrases concerning the threats or the powers that you have is not enough. You really have to understand how to use this model. One way to do so is that you first write down the situation as it is. The current situation. The situation now. And the interesting part about this model is that it is kind of dynamic. Because you can make kind of a scenario how the, the threat or the power will evaluate during the coming year or coming two years. This gives the model kind of a new dimension. And it also gives you an insight, you as a specialist, since you already did a lot of research concerning your consumers, your competitors or the market. And you probably can kind of expel what the market will do in the near future. So at every power or every threat you write the situation now and how it will develop in the nearby future. So for instance if the threat of the new entrance at this moment is high you can probably look at the near future if it will be higher or perhaps similar or perhaps lower. If you have the feeling that certain countries really are developing, developing countries and really do great work in developing technology etc. then as if the situation now is kind of a threat you can imagine that the situation in the near future will be higher, so the threat will be higher. The same goes for the bargaining power of entrance. For instance, if the bargaining power now is strong and due to, for instance, the internet and the barriers to export and import won't be uh, stronger or higher, but perhaps maybe even lower, and it's easy for consumers to buy their products from overseas, then that bargaining power won't be lower. It actually might be higher. So for every force that you mention, for every force that you examine and you do a research for, you always first write down what the case is and why you think, due to your analysis, that the competition, for instance, is the rivalry is really high now and it probably will be higher. You also write down your uh, future view, your kind of scenario about how this will develop. Now this is not it. This is not the only part that you have to do with the five forces model. There's something more. Michael Porter also mentions in his books the barriers to enter and the barriers to exit. You might want to give it the name two extra forces. But there are entry barriers and exit barriers. And these really concern the rivalry. Because if you are in a situation, you are at this moment in a certain market. And you deliver your products, you sell your products, you buy your products. And you really done a lot of effort to compete in this market then it could be that the situation is that it's not so easy to step out. Take for instance the car manufacturer Saab. Saab went bankrupt, but they still have an obligation to keep producing spare parts for all their cars. Actually you have to do this for 20 years. So it's not so easy to step out of this market. The same goes for the barrier to enter. This is really important for the new entrant. It's not so easy if we stay at the car market to enter the car market. There are a lot of rules, legislations and all kind of every country has its own rules how a car is safe and what uh, kind of tests need to be done before you actually can bring a car to the market. So you can imagine that the barrier to enter the market is quite high in this car manufacturing market. Also you feel that this has kind of a relationship with the new the threat of new entrants 
because the threat of new entrants in this case isn't really high. Though we have to be honest and the electrical car business is a really attractive market so you can imagine that the threat for new entrants could be is not really low but it is there it's not also really high it's common and the barrier to exit is high so these are two extra forces you can name them uh, which also give this model extra dimension now as i started this web seminar this model is created to determine the market attractiveness. So we set up this model with one certain question. How attractive is this market which we are in? How attractive is this market? So we have to end this model. After all your research, your analysis and writing down per force, what's the situation if it's high and in the near future higher, if it's low and in the near future lower, etc. You have to finish off with a conclusion. And the conclusion always starts with the market for etc. etc. is attractive or not attractive or average, whatever case uh, you are in. So finish your model with a conclusion, a clear conclusion if this market is attractive or not. So I hope that I explained this model and I hope that you do your research in your textbooks and try to understand the five forces model of Porter.